South Point. How's everybody doing out there this morning? We're so glad to see you guys. Welcome to everybody that's watching us online on all the different platforms. Y'all go ahead and stand up. Who's ready to worship together this morning? We're ready to. Y'all go ahead and put your hands together.
still call me friend Cause the God of the mountain Is the God of the valley There's not a place Your mercy and grace Won't find me again
nothing but ashes You start a fire You found us as captives Rescued our hearts Jesus, our victory How great you are to my knees. 
Father, we give you all the glory this morning, God. And Lord, we thank you for that peace that passes all understanding and the comfort that we feel when we know that all we have to do when the world feels like it's falling apart is fall to our knees and breathe you in. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Welcome, welcome. How's everybody doing? We're so glad to see you guys. We're gonna take 42 seconds and change some stuff around on the stage. If you will, just give your neighbor a socially distant high five and we'll be right back. Ready, set, go. My name is Carson. And I'm Monica. And welcome back to your in-person experience here at South Point. We're so excited that you guys are here. Mm -hmm. And for all of our first time guests, welcome. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today. And if this is your first time, please make sure to text the word connect to that number on the bottom of the screen. And you're gonna get a hassle-free guarantee for us to connect with you, a handwritten card in the mail, and we'd love to do that with you. Absolutely. We also want to pray for you. Mm -hmm. um, God wants us to come to him with everything, big, small, in between, because you've got and he loves us. So we want to go before God for you as well. So please uh, text that number um, and give us your prayer request. And we promise we will uh, usher you before God and you will be blessed. Okay? Absolutely. And guys, we're going to be starting something back up here during our second service, which is called Ooh. Plugged In. So if you've been watching us online or you've been here one or two times and you want to take the next step, you want to learn a little bit more about South Point, you want to get on a serve team, you want to you know, just get more involved, then Plugged In is for you. And so if you're interested, text the word Plugged In, that number on the bottom of the screen, and we're going to have two meetings. They're going to be on September 6th and September 13th, two Sundays during the second service, so the 1015 service. So come at 9 a.m., worship with us, and then enjoy Plugged In. I did plugged in. It was really great. It's awesome. I advise you to do it. It was a really a great thing. Um, also, oh, we need to tell them how we can 
Have we talked about giving yet? We haven't talked about giving. We yet. need to talk about yes. giving because we are a giving church, and I mm -hmm. love that. So right now, we are giving to our Horn Lake teachers because mm -hmm. they are doing such a big job for our kids. Um, they're doing more than what they've normally done in the past. So here is this lovely gift. You like that? I like that. That was great. That Thank was you. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah. And they've got something, guys. There's a, a Tupperware thing in here. There's a wonderful tumbler, some gift cards, mm -hmm. and some pretty ball and shades. These right I mean, those, those are some stunner shades right there. They like, are. big time. So for all of our Horn Lake educators and for all of our teachers across DeSoto County, thank you, thank you, thank you. We are praying for you, we love you, and we hope that this blesses you. Absolutely. And so now we need to talk about how we can connect with the church, right? Mm -hmm. Other than being here, obviously, because that's awesome, but you can connect with us via TikTok, mm -hmm. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. All five of those things, five things. So we want you to be able to connect with us in those ways as well. Um, and we just love you guys, and we're so glad you're here. We're so glad to see some of you back, and we're going to go on with worship. So have a great rest of the day. Absolutely. Bye, guys. Love you. <laughs> that was good. That was good. Because we're awesome. We are awesome. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> yes, we are awesome. What's up, South Point? Oh, come on, where are y'all at? What's going on? Y'all doing good? There you are, there you are. I'm so glad you're here. Listen, if it's your first time here today, let me just tell you, you are in the best place ever. And you don't know my name because it's your first time. My name's Craig, and my wife Patty and I get to pastor the best place on the planet right here. Welcome to South Point. Will you guys do me a favor? Will you just put your hands together? Help me welcome everybody watching online. You guys are awesome. YouTube, Church Online, Facebook, you guys are with us. We miss seeing you, and so hopefully you will return soon to the house. All right. So, hey. Okay. We are closing out our series, Farm to Table, today. So this is the last episode of it, and uh, this has been one of those series, I don't say this very often, but this is one of those series that I really hope you actually, in a couple months or so, or whatever, go back and watch this series again, maybe do a small group around it. Um, the content in this series is one of those things, I'm not saying, Craig, you're so awesome, you need to watch, no, no. Jesus is so awesome because Jesus' main message, which we miss so often, is the kingdom of God. And so what Jesus says, what we say in the South, like Christianity, okay, we'll just do this. Christianity in the South is kind of summed up in get saved, don't burn in hell. That, that's, that's, that's pretty much where we are. And that's good news that we can get saved and don't have to burn in hell, right? Come on, let's. If Memphis is this hot in August, you know hell's got to be hotter, right? I mean, so we don't want to go there, all right? And so Jesus said, it's good news, the kingdom of God. It's good news that we can get saved, right, that we can walk through the door of Jesus Christ, and it's good news that there's this kingdom of God that we can be a part of. Look at this verse, Matthew 24, 14. It says this, and this gospel, you can underline that or circle that if you want to, the, all, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. And so understand he's saying, and this gospel, the Greek word for gospel is euangelion. Are you, are you impressed? You like that? Euangelion. And here's what it means. It means good news. That's what it means. And then translators over the years, they've kind of made good news the gospel. And so in our southern Christian mind, the gospel is getting saved and we're saved by grace. Praise God. And that's awesome. However, Jesus is saying, okay, that's just the beginning. 
I have good news for you. It is that you get to walk and enjoy the kingdom of God right now. That should be mind-blowing, okay? So this whole series, I've put a lot of, I am putting a lot of emphasis on it because I think the topic and the content is stellar, and I hope that you go back and revisit it so that we can all be better kingdom walkers in DeSoto County and Shelby County, and if you're here from Crittenden County, or Marshall County, or wherever else you may hail from. All right, so the first week we talked about, do you remember what we talked about? We talked about, I'm going to give you a quick update, additives and preservatives, and the reason that people don't like the gospel message, the kingdom of God, really is because we as Christians have added stuff to it that's made it a little bit not very tasty, all right? And in the second week, we talked about Jesus. He's the open door. He's the threshold that we walk through to get into the kingdom. The only way you can get into the kingdom is by Jesus Christ. There's no way to the Father except through him. It's all about Jesus. Whoop, whoop. But there's more. But wait, there's more. It's not just getting saved. Okay. And so that was the second week. So the third week, we talked about the Holy Spirit. And now that you're walking in the kingdom of God, the Holy Spirit, he's with you right now. Um, if you have questions about the Holy Spirit, again, Go back and watch that message. There's some great practical stuff about the Holy Spirit and how you walk with him. And then last week, we did, we did the bad side, right? And we talked about the Holy Spirit, but then last week we talked about, hey, God prepared a beautiful table for us right in front of the enemy. He, he'd be right there, and, he, and we need to keep him right there. Let's not make room for him at our table, okay? So today, here's what I thought we would do today. Today, <laughs> I thought we would look at just what it means to practically walk out the kingdom of God every single day. Taking all of this into consideration, the, the enemy and the Holy Spirit and Jesus and all of that stuff, and we're going to pursue this thing. Matthew 6, says this, so above all, um, in other words, more important than anything else, more important than keeping your streaks alive on Instagram, right here, so above all, constantly, don't stop, constantly chase after the realm of God's kingdom and the righteousness that proceeds from it. So I've said this every single week. You can fill in the blanks so you don't forget it. The kingdom of God is now and, come on, help me out, and not yet. Now and not yet. And this is where I see a lot of us, this is where we're going to drill down on today. This is where I see a lot of good, meaning, wonderful, beautiful, Christian, loving, Jesus kinds of people struggle with finding their identity in the kingdom of God. Finding their identity of who they are in Jesus Christ on a Monday morning when your boss is all up in your grill. When the world is telling you who you think you should be, you know, get, don't get confused because God says you're somebody else. And so you can fill in the blank here. Here's the deal. This is the way it works in this earthly kingdom. In the earthly kingdom, behavior determines your identity. Behavior determines your identity, and, and that makes perfectly good sense. I think everybody, whether you're a Christian or a non-Christian, you, you get that. The thing you do a lot of is kind of your identity, right? If you, if you fish, right, if you fish a lot, what do you, you're a fisher, you're, you're a fisherman, right? You're, you're a fisherman. If, you, if you're a smoke, if you smoke, guess what? You're going to find other people that smoke, you're going to hang out, you're going to clump, clump, and, and you're, you're a smoker, or, and the list goes on and on. If you, if you drive a truck, you're a trucker. If your son is the trucker, then you're a mother trucker. Okay, so, so you got all these. <laughs> so, we, good Lord help us. And so then, if you become a Christian, you're a Christianer. Okay, and here's how Christianers work. You get saved, you find Jesus, and then every time your behavior determines your identity, you have a behavior that determines your identity, and then that identity identifies you and other people, and then you clump with the people that are like you. For example, in Christianity, this is going somewhere, hang with me, okay? In, in Christianity world, you get saved, and then you clump with people who have behaviors like you and that you think are proper behaviors. We call them denominations, okay? So, you get saved, and everybody's saved, right? You got Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, we all saved. Maybe you didn't know that. You mean I'm going to be in heaven with Presbyterians? Yeah, probably so. Okay, so, so we're all saved. And then we find people that do behaviors or don't do behaviors that we agree with, and we clump in those things. So you've got Baptists that have Baptist behaviors, Methodists that have Methodist behaviors, Presbyterians that have Presbyterian behaviors, Catholics that have Catholic behaviors. And, and actually, a, a survey came out this week that Southern Baptists are 98% for wearing face masks all the time, even after the pandemic. Because, 
you don't recognize him in the liquor store. Okay, so there's... <laughs> Come on, that's funny. I don't care who you are. If you're offended, you're Baptist. Okay, so here's the deal. <laughs> so we, we have all these things, behaviors and identity, and our behaviors are our identity. And then we have, now get this, everybody understands that, Christian or not. And then we as Christians say things like this. Watch this. We say things like, love the sinner, I hate the sin. I love the sinner, I hate the sin. And right now some of you are nodding, yes, Pastor Craig, that's good preaching right there. You show me any sin and I'll show you hate bubbling up from my heart. Not for the person, but for what they're doing. Okay? But understand, if you're not in the kingdom of God, if you're, not in, if you're just living in the worldly kingdom, then guess what? Your identity is determined by your behavior. So when we say things, well-meaning Christians saying things like, hate the sin, love the sinner, that sinner is saying, yeah, but I do that. And inside they recognize that's who I am. And that's where Christianity comes across as being ugly and hateful. And we don't understand it because all we're saying is, I hate the sin. But what they're hearing is, you hate me. And that, that's, it gets confusing because here's what we're trying to do. We're walking in, the, we're trying to walk in the kingdom of God, yet minister through the, the lens and the filter of the earthly kingdom. Y'all tracking with me? Okay, okay, okay. So everybody knows, everybody knows. Behavior determines your identity until you step into the kingdom of God, and then everything changes. In the kingdom of God, it's not behavior determines your identity. No, no. Fill in the blank. In the kingdom of God, your identity determines your behavior. Look, look at 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Now, if anyone is enfolded into Christ, man, I love that. If anyone is just enfolded into Christ, he's become an entirely new creation. I'm going to say that loudly again. Once you are enfolded in Christ, once you have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, once you have said yes to the dress, once you say yes to Christ, then you are a completely and entirely new creation. All that is related to the old order. Let me rephrase that. All of your behaviors that are attached to your old order, it's what? Oh, come on. You're not saying it. You know why? Because you don't believe it yet. But I got about 15 more minutes. All right. So here we go. The, it's everything. All your behaviors related to the old. It's what? Your old order has vanished. Behold, everything is fresh and new. When you step, this is, this is the good news. When you step through the doorway of Jesus Christ, the old you and all of its behaviors, all of its habits, all of its addictions are dead. Crucified with Christ. Okay. Hey, you know, it sounds good, Pastor, but let's be honest, I'm saved and I still do crack. I'm saved, but I can't stop gossiping for nothing. I'm saved, but I'm still cheating on my spouse. I'm saved, but I'm still living with my girlfriend. I mean, it's a good preaching word, but really all of my behaviors are not dead because I'm still doing it. Okay, um, y'all still love your pastor? <laughs> You're like, he just listed some sins. He's talking about me. Welcome to South Point. Okay, um, see... I love AA, AA Alcoholics Anonymous. It really is, it's, it's a great organization. So if you've been through that or you're going through that, that's fabulous. I'm more like uh, Celebrate Recovery, which is a fabulous Christian perspective of that. And we actually have a Celebrate Recovery meeting that meets here every Thursday night at 6.30, I believe. Anyway, Alcoholics Anonymous says, they have a little statement that I don't like, that I don't agree with. And they'll, they'll say this, they'll say, once a drunk, always a drunk. Okay, and what they teach is, just bear with me. What they teach is you're ne you can, it's impossible to get completely free from your addictions. At the very best, you have to learn to control your addictions. Okay? 
You have to, you have to control your addictions. And so you work really hard, and maybe, maybe you try, girl, you try, 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 and you might make it for a little while, and then you fail, you try, you fail, you try, you fail. And then maybe, let's just say, the planets align, and you actually really do control the addictive behavior that's in you then what you have done, whether you realize it or not, now you have stepped into a spirit of control. You think your addictions, you've controlled them, so now you need to control everything else in your life. Now here, here's rule number one of walking in the kingdom every single day. You are not in control. God is in control. I expected more applause from that. See, you, maybe I shocked you. You thought you were in control. You, okay. You don't have to raise your hand, but how many thought you were in control and then 2020 happened? Well. See, the reason some people are all sideways, got their panties in a twist is because it's that spirit of control that's in them and now they can't control anything. And it's just, a, it's a tug of war. It's a struggle. It's a struggle. And when, we, when you fall into this controlling spirit idea, listen, what you're doing is you're falling into, you're falling prey to one of the enemies greatest attacks and I, you can argue it's the only one that he has i think it is but you can add more if you want to but fill in the blank the enemy's only power is deception the enemy's only power is deception see the enemy right now he's trying to deceive you to say no no you are your behaviors i saw what you did last night girl i saw i saw you and you'll always be that you'll always be that and jesus is saying no, 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 no. Don't be deceived that you're that because you walked through the door of Jesus Christ and I crucified myself for you and your sins. I set you free. And so all of your behaviors, all of your issues are nailed to a cross and you do not have to fall prey to them. Stop listening to the enemy and recognize that Jesus died for you and he made you, listen to me, he made you righteous. He made you righteous holy. Well, I didn't do, he's not asking what you did. He's saying, I made you righteous. I made you holy. Can I tell you something? That's good news. It's way better news than you're acting. I hope somebody online is at least going, Pastor Craig, be preaching. I'm holy. I'm righteous. Somebody. See, and, and, so, okay. Somebody sitting on their couch, you just said, that's right, Pastor. I'm a sinner saved by grace. Oh, hallelujah. That's the wrong kingdom. I'm a sinner saved by grace. Why are you still confessing that you're a sinner? How about you say, I used to be a sinner, but I've been saved by grace, and so now I'm a child of the king, walking in the kingdom, who makes some bad choices now and then. <laughs> well, pastor, let us sit down. Well, pastor... I don't want to get too bold and start telling people that I'm a, I'm a child of God. I don't want to start declaring that I'm righteous, that I'm holy. Because I know when I mess up, they'll call me a... Uh, Come on, come on, say it, say it loud and proud because you think it. I'm not going to say I'm a child of the king. I'm not going to say I'm a, a professing Christian. I'm not going to declare all of these things because when I mess up, my friends and the people watching will declare me a, a hypocrite. It's easier to be a backslider than it is to be a hypocrite, right? Nobody wants to be a hypocrite. Let me help you out. Here's what you need to do. If that's your issue, if that's what's going through your brain, quit. Quit trying. You didn't see that coming, did you? I don't know. Didn't Jesus tell us to try hard? Not once in the entire Bible does it ever say, try to do good. Try to be well. Tr it, it, just stop trying. You want to get rid of the hypocrite idea? Okay, stop trying to do so good and just start doing. Look at this. Fill in the blank. Daily living in the kingdom of God is not about trying to live right. It's about training to live right. See, trying is this. Here's what trying does. My kids, when I would tell them to do something when they were younger, they would say, okay, I'll try. And I would say, then don't even waste your time because trying ain't never done nothing. That might be horrible grammar, but you get my point. Trying, when you're trying, have you ever tried to not sin? Come on, let's be honest. Let's say your, your go-to is gossip. 
And so you wake up Monday morning and you go, I'm going to try not to gossip today. I am not going to gossip. You're already thinking about gossip first thing when your feet hit the floor. And the first thing you're going to do is grab your phone and gossip all over the place. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, he's preaching truth today. Try. You try not to sin and you fail and then you want to quit and you try not try to do this right and then you don't and so you get discouraged and so then you feel guilty and so then you're back to the beginning and you repent again. I guess I'm a sinner saved by grace. And you try and fail and try and fail and the enemy deceives you to thinking that you're a sum of your failures rather than the child of the king who sets you free. So stop trying. Please, for the love of the kingdom of God, quit. But train. Because training is completely different. You go into any sports facility, any, any locker room. Listen, training areas are not for the lazy. They're not for the weak, and they are definitely not for the quitters. If your goal in whatever sports you play, like my goal when I used to play football was to bench press 500 pounds, okay? <laughs> None of that's true, but hang with me. (laughs) And I went in the first time, and the coach was like, I don't think you can bench press 500 pounds. I'm like, I can do it, I can do it. No, you can't. I'm going to try. He said, don't try, train. And so you start with what? I mean, common sense just says you're going to train up to that, right? You're going to start with my bench press weight, like 32 and a half ounces. That's that's where I am. And so you, you train. But here's the difference between training and trying. When you train and you don't succeed at what you were attempting to do, You don't quit. You just realize that what you went through made you stronger for the next day. It's a different mindset. It's not, oh my God, I failed. I failed. I'm going to burn in hell. Oh my God. Remember a couple weeks ago when I talked about how I screwed up at Walmart? Anybody remember? You know what I did not do? Those of you who didn't get the story, you can go back and listen to it. You know what I did not do when I missed the Holy Spirit? Walk into the car. Patty, what's wrong with you? Oh, God, I'm going to die. I'm going to burn in hell. The Holy Spirit told me. <laughs> the Holy Spirit told me to do that. And I did it. No. What did I do? It's training. It never ends. That's the joy. You get to do it again. But now I've realized, you know what? I need to pay a little better attention. When I'm hungry and when I'm cranky and my, when my wife makes me go to Walmart when I really don't want to, pay attention because the Holy Spirit probably wants to do something through me. It's a difference between trying and training. Look at this. For, are y'all with me? I'm the only one excited. I'm really excited about this. Okay, 1 Corinthians 9 says this. A true athlete will be disciplined in every respect, practicing constant self-control in order to win a laurel wreath that quickly withers. But we, those people that are kingdom walkers, but we run our race to win a victor's crown that will last for eternity. For that reason, I don't run just for exercise Somebody say amen right there. I don't run just for exercise or box like one throwing aimless punches. But I, help me out, but I train like a champion athlete. I subdue my body and get it under control. Your body is a horrible leader, but it is a great slave. Get your body under control so that after preaching the good news to others, I myself won't be disqualified. I'm not a hypocrite. And I'm, not a, I'm not a backslidden quitter. I'm a child of the king, walking in the kingdom and in the blessings of the kingdom. How about you? Yeah. 1 Timothy 4, 7 says this. Do not waste time arguing over politics and conspiracy theories. I'll read that again. Because when you look at those things, that's exactly what those are. Why are you wasting your time? Don't waste your time arguing over arguing over politics. Is he saying don't vote? I never said that. Do not waste time arguing over politics and conspiracy theories. Instead, train yourself to be godly. And then Paul lays this out in in this next passage of Scripture. Paul lays out what it looks like to live in the kingdom of this earth or to live in the kingdom of God right now, in the here and now. Check this out. And I'll, I'll do little comments, but really just pay attention to where, where, where's your heart? Are you in the kingdom? Are you living in this kingdom world or are you living in this world with your feet on this planet, but your heart, your soul, and your spirit is in the kingdom of God? 
Galatians 5. The cravings of the self-life are obvious. It's obvious. Sexual immorality, lustful thoughts, pornography, chasing after things instead of God, manipulating others, hatred of those who get in your way on 240, senseless arguments, resentment when others are favored, temper tantrums, angry quarrels, only thinking of yourself, being in love with your own opinion, posting it all over the worldwide network, being envious of the blessings of others, murder, uncontrolled addictions, wild parties, and all other similar behavior. Haven't I already warned you that those who use their freedom for these things will not inherit the kingdom realm of God? And taking this in context, there's certain times where he says kingdom of God and he's talking about the, here, the, the thereafter. Right here he's not talking, he's talking about right now. Because see, if you're walking Walking in all of that stuff, you are not receiving the blessings of the kingdom of God. Say, well, am I still saved? You're asking a very low-hanging fruit question. And then he goes on to say, okay, if you're going to walk in the kingdom, if you're going to be a kingdom walker, here's what it looks like. But the fruit produced, not, man, not trying, don't miss that, not trying, you don't, you don't sit down and squeeze out a grape. Come on, somebody. That gave you a visual, didn't it? Some of you are straining so hard to be kind, and your face does not look kind at all. You look constipated, all right? So don't, it's produced by the Holy Spirit within you. It's already in you. It's divine love in all its varied expressions. Joy that overflows, peace that subdues, patience that endures, kindness in action, a life full of virtue, faith that prevails, gentleness of heart, strength of spirit. Never set the law above these qualities, for they are meant to be, oh, I love that word, limitless. Keep in mind that we who belong to Jesus, the anointed one, have already experienced crucifixion. Come on, we talked about that, right? We've already experienced that. It's not our behaviors. For everything connected with our self-life old self, earthly kingdom, was put to death on the cross and crucified with the Messiah. We must live in the Holy Spirit and follow after him. So how does this work? All right, real quick, how does this work? It works like this. Did you know the same Greek word for rules is the same Greek word for a trellis? Okay, just hang with me for a second. So the Holy Spirit grows things in us, the fruit, like a grapevine, all right? And that grapevine needs to be trained where to go and what trellis to hang on. Some of you are from Mississippi and you're like, well, it's a grapevine. Okay, a tomato plant. You have to train that vine. It'll just grow, but then you have to come out and say, no, no, we're, we're going up here, right? There's rules and disciplines in our life that we can hang and train the fruit of the Holy Spirit to grow on. Does that make sense? And you, we, it, it's up to you. you. Say, well, that's your job, Pastor. Do it for me. It won't work that way. It won't work that way. I really hope that today, right now, that some of you are saying, I'm going to leave here and I'm going to train to be a kingdom walker. I'm going to train. So what does that look like? I'm going to give you two tips, two quick tips. But here's what you have to do. Take that sh note sheet home with you, or it's in Galatians 5. Find that scripture. Find the fruit that you need. Keep that in front of you because that's what we grow off of. Here's the first tip. Know what you are training for. You look at that list and you say, and then look at your life. This is where it's work. It's you training and growing in the Holy Spirit. You look at your life and say, where is my gaping hole of fruit? Where, where, where am I lacking? You know, and, and then pray for that fruit to be in your life. Train the vine of the Holy Spirit to grow around that. So a lot of people say all the time, you know, patience is in that list. Don't pray for patience, your life will fall apart. That's the dumbest advice ever. And if you've said that, I'm just going to tell you, stop saying that. Okay? The reason it's so, patience is so difficult is because patience doesn't belong in our culture. We are a very impatient culture. So to be patient, you have to be something counter-cultural. But isn't that the point of walking in the kingdom of God? to be different than everybody else. And so when you pray for patience, yes, watch this. The Holy Spirit, because he loves you so much and you're asking to be trained in patience, he will put you in situations where you get to exercise patience. Your life is not falling apart. The Holy Spirit is saying, we've got a lot of work to do in this one, right? 
for a while for me, a couple years ago, it was, I realized I was not being gentle, especially with the people closest to me. Isn't it funny? We can, <laughs> isn't it funny? We can be very kind and gentle to people that we barely know. But then when we get into our own homes with the doors closed, we turn into rawr. And I was a little rawr. And the Holy Spirit just said, I yelled at Patty one time. It was a couple years ago. I'm sure she never remembers any of those things. Um, it's a couple years ago. And I just, the Holy Spirit just really convicted me and said, wow, so that's how we're treating our wives nowadays, huh? I'm like, ooh, all right. And so I started praying for gentleness because I saw that as something that I was lacking. And so what does that look like? I prayed for gentleness, and then the Lord put me in situations where I had the opportunity to be gentle. What does that look like? That means I, was in, I had an opportunity because I was in a situation where nobody was being gentle. So I had the opportunity to grow and to train in gentleness. Does, does that make sense to everybody? And it's all individual. You have to do this yourself with the Holy Spirit and talk to him and he'll do things in you that'll blow your mind. Here's the second one and then we'll close with this. Always push your limits. Always push your limits. A training room, a practice room is not a place for lazy quitters. It's not a place for people riding the bench and just hoping until the glory train comes and picks us up that we all get to escape. A training room to walk in the kingdom, to be a kingdom walker, push your limits. Come on, push your limits. You know what they are, push them. And that's why we have the grace of God, because his grace covers even when we step out of what we, I can't bench press 500 pounds, but when I pick that bar up, I got a little bit of grace. I won't die. It'll just get a little hurt. Right? Grace, check out this verse, 2 Peter 3.18. But continue to grow and increase in God's grace. He's not talking about salvation. He's not talking about go back and grow more in salvation. Get saved a little bit more. No. I think Christians burn up more grace than the biggest heathen. Because we need it every day. Listen, you're not a hypocrite. Somebody needs to hear that. You're, you're not a hypocrite, man. Lady, you're a child of the king. You're awesome. You are not your behaviors because your behaviors have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, you live. Not you, but the Christ in you. Your identity is in the king. And you are a kingdom walker who just makes some bad choices now and then. I hope that makes you feel a little better because guess what Jesus called it? You ready? good news. I got good news for you. You're no longer a sum of your failures. You're a sum of his victories. Will you just take a minute? Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, I love you so much. So much. Jesus, I thank you. I'm, I'm blown away, Lord, that you have opened the door, that you are the door for us, Jesus, and you have opened up this whole kingdom of God to us where we can experience all of these things and just walk a different life than our culture. That's what you created us to do. You've forgiven us to be that. You've put a trellis of rules and disciplines in our personal lives where we can use that to hang the fruit of the Holy Spirit on so that we can grow and so that the fruit that grows in us can be used on the table of humanity to show change. Still praying with your eyes closed. There's some people here today, and you've never done it. You, you have not stepped through the door of Jesus Christ. You haven't accepted what he has for you because you've always been scared that you would be called a hypocrite. You would, be, you would be judged. You would be all of these things. And I'm telling you right now, Jesus is standing at your heart door saying, please stop listening to the deception of the enemy and realize that I did everything for you. All you have to do is say, I do. I accept. I want to pray with you right where you are. And here how this, here's how this is going to work. You're done trying. You're ready to start training. You're done trying. You're ready to start training. I want to pray with you right where you are. I'm not going to call you down front. not going to embarrass you like that. But I am going to ask you to raise your hand up in just a second. You're ready to stop trying you're going to start training. You're going to accept what Jesus has for you, and you're going to start walking right now a completely different way. If that's you, come on, put your hand up right now. Pop them up. Come on. I'm going to count. Yep, one, two. Don't be scared. Three, four, five. This is the greatest decision ever. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 
11. Father, I thank you for these 11 people. I thank you that we're done trying, and now we're going to train. Lord Jesus, I ask that you do exactly what you said you would do in your word, that right now, sinners saved by grace. And right now, right after that statement, they were sinners. Now they're saved by grace. Father, I ask that you forgive them of their sins, that you wash them clean, that you set them free from the addictions and the behaviors that's controlling them and pushing them in a certain direction. Let them experience the death to the old self and let them experience the resurrection to the new life in you. We love you so much, Father, and I thank you for this miraculous thing that is happening in this house. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Man, listen, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I really appreciate it, because if you weren't here, I would just be doing this by myself with a camera, and we've all learned that's not fun. So um, if, if you raise your hand for that prayer and, y- and you want a little more information on that, there's a free book down here on both sides called Fresh Start. It's just going to give you, it gives you amazing next steps in kingdom walking. It talks about the fruits of the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit. So you can get that book completely free. You can come down and get it at the close of service. And then also, if anybody needs prayer for anything, Anybody needs prayer for anything? There's people down front on both sides that would love to connect with you and pray with you. All right, stand with me, if you will. I'll pray the benediction, and when I say amen as you exit, let me just remind you once again, if you could please exit to your right, that would be fabulous and help us out a lot. All right? And let me just say, before I pray, I love you guys. Thank you for letting me be your pastor. I I really genuinely appreciate that. You guys are amazing. I love you. All right, let me pray. Lord, right now, we just ask that the words of our mouth, those meditations in our heart, Lord, they'll be acceptable in your sight. You're our Lord, our strength, and our Redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great week, y'all.